My name is Chris Rose, and on behalf of my colleagues at Spencer Stewart, it's our privilege to once again participate in Retail Connected. I'm coming to you from Chicago in the United States, where I have responsibility for leadership advisory services for Spencer Stewart's consumer practice. Last September at World Retail Congress's Connected event, we were excited to share some themes and learning that emerged as we advise leaders throughout the onset of the pandemic. Using excerpts of interviews that we conducted with the four retail CEO panelists, we addressed two important questions. First, what had those leaders done to successfully adapt to the crisis? And second, what had enabled their organizations to elevate their performance as the industry continued to recover and revitalize? This year, we're delighted to bring four new retail leaders who will share their unique perspectives and insights regarding how their companies have successfully navigated the pandemic so far and how they'll apply the lessons learned as the retail industry continues to transform. To structure our CEO dialogues, we used our leadership framework. As shown on the slide, this starts with a simple but very important premise that leaders have to respond to the market context in which they operate. Informed by this context, they must create clarity regarding where their organization is going, the purpose, the vision, the strategy for how they uniquely serve their customers' needs. Leaders must also align their teams to drive value through shared understanding, collaboration, and effective processes that manage the flow of ideas and resources toward execution. And finally, perhaps most importantly, they must inject a sense of vitality, energizing and inspiring people at all levels of the organization. Our CEO discussions confirmed that these leadership fundamentals have been even more critical during the pandemic. Starting with clarity, the CEOs that we recently interviewed repeatedly told us that they turned to their organization's purpose and strategy as a North Star. Rather than make wholesale changes to their organization's direction, they truly reinforced their long-term vision to provide a sense of stability and continuity in the face of crisis. Joanne Kravosserat, CEO of Tapestry, which is the first New York-based house of modern luxury lifestyle brands and includes Coach, Kate Spade, New York, and Stuart Weitzman, shared how purpose has been a galvanizing force. It's been so important for us to have a, a, a cause and a purpose that's constant, that, that our teams can get up and rely on. I know why I'm getting up in the morning. I know what we're here to do. And you know the world around us is changing and moving quickly, but I have real clarity as to what I'm doing in my role, in my, in my work. And that has been really grounding, I think, for our teams and so important at a time when there's so much disruption in the world that there's that constant that, that people can really, it feels tangible. Um, and I, and I, so I do think the power of purpose has been, for me, quite a learning um, as we've gone through and navigated these unprecedented times um, and, and how important it is for our team. Similarly, Michael Klieger, CEO and president of MyTeresa.com, an industry leader in the world of online luxury fashion and retail, noted how strategic consistency reassured customers that the company was committed to being a trusted long-term partner. In relationships, be it customer relationships, be it brand partner relationships, there is one currency, which is reliability. You need to remain reliable. And, and we were all facing the same thing. So reassuring that to the customers, we are here and we will continue to be here for you and we will try to maintain operations. Luckily, we were able to do that continuously. And also vis-a-vis -vis our brands, we clearly communicated, um, no, we will stay on course. This is not, okay, this season we drastically change. No, we stay on course. We fundamentally believe that our business is right. We know our customers like what we do. And so a, 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 a crisis is, again, you should quickly adapt your tactics, your daily doings, but don't quickly adapt your fundamentals, your principles. This is where stability and reliability in, in any industry, but also particularly in our industry, is very important. This was echoed by Ying Xu, president of Umark, one of the oldest and largest retailers in China, that is a technology-led business operating over a thousand stores. She reinforced the critical role that retail organizations were playing to ensure that people continued to have a ready supply of affordable goods in the midst of the pandemic. So we, we made the three promises, three guarantees, um, to guarantee the supply, guarantee the retail price, um, to keep it at a stable level, 
and also guarantee the quality. You know, uh, when there is a rush, we uh, in the short of a supply, so we have to be very uh, careful about the quality control. And most importantly, we guarantee to protect and, uh, the safety of our staffs. So what we propose um, reflecting our value, uh, that is when it matters people's life, consciousness guides business, meaning we are not simply uh, doing business at this very critical uh, moment. So what we deliver to customers are not just the sufficient daily necessities, but confidence to cope with uh, the crisis. Our CEO panel also shared learning and best practices to align execution in the face of the enormous challenges presented by the pandemic. Aligning an organization during crisis has required tremendous emphasis on communication so that tactics can be adjusted nimbly and responsibly. Gaston Bottazzini, CEO of Falabella, one of the largest retail platforms in Latin America, operating department stores, home improvement outlets, supermarkets, shopping centers, and a financial services business across seven countries, noted how he structured interaction daily to ensure that everyone was informed, enabled, and coordinated. I can set up a breakfast with 20, 30, 50 people, and I do that on a, on a regular basis, which allows you to get input from a lot of people, um, which in a physical setting is difficult to do. We have a regional footprint uh, in, in all of Latin America. Now it has become a lot easier, for example, to have a meeting with, you know, or a breakfast with people from stores in, in many different uh, parts of the, of the region at the same time. Uh, so I think uh, actually, uh, the the um, the pandemic has brought me a lot more opportunities for interaction with medium-sized uh, groups of people and uh, getting a lot of input. Mm -hmm. uh, so on one hand, I instituted a daily meeting with my team. It was unthought of to have a daily meeting, but now with Zoom, you just can kind of have a 20-minute daily meeting where you look at, you know, what have we learned from in the last 24 hours? What's new? Is there anything we need to change? Uh, and that has really kept us very close as a team. You know, it has had the impact of, of keeping us very close as a team. And at the same time, I could reach out to uh, the fringes of the organization and get a lot of input of, about what's happening and how people are feeling and therefore react to that um, actually in a much more systematic way than I had done uh, previously. For all of our CEOs, the customer became their organization's focal point. As consumer behavior evolved, serving changing consumer needs became a rallying point as the cycle time between customer insight and organizational response decreased dramatically within our panelists' businesses. So the team has become more than ever uh, through this uh, uh, difficult time, I would say, uh, especially the first few months. Um, closely monitoring customers' needs. So because the lifestyle have changed so much um, and our people have a much deeper understanding of um, the meaning of customer oriented. While clarity and alignment were essential to navigating the pandemic, our CEO spoke of the ongoing challenge of motivating, inspiring, and creating a sense of vitality. Leaders at all levels of every organization have been taxed by the all too familiar demands of working from home. Michael Klieger, CEO of MyTeresa.com, shared the importance of making an emotional connection during these turbulent times. Missing the human interactions, missing the, 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 the brainstormings together in the same room. I mean, there is a challenge to innovation because that's how you normally innovate. But on the other hand, it, it is interesting and it was interesting to learn how you can use some of these circumstances to become innovative. So for example, we were always struggling to interact with customers about innovation because our customers are very busy. And so uh, organizing a customer focus group was always a nightmare because um, people are very hard to get. We, we serve very successful professionals. We had more customer focus groups than ever because everyone was at home and we organized it via Zoom. 
We had Zoom interviews with customers, and and to some degree, they were even um, they were not happy about another Zoom, but it, it was a diversion. It was something else. So over the last 12 months, we had more customer feedback and more uh, more interaction with customers than I can recall before. And we use that to our advantage and to discuss with customers. I mean, we had uh, in, in, in the US and China and Europe, we had one hour discussions with individual customers. They loved it. The sentiment was echoed by Joanne Kravassara, CEO of Tapestry, who has been intentional about fostering the psychological safety and inclusive environment in which all voices can contribute. Absolutely, we need to hear all voices. And, and you know, I think in, in order to stay abreast of the, the accelerating trends in the world and with our consumers, we need to um, empower our teams and we need to hear from our teams because we can't, we won't be able to stay, you know, ahead of such a fast changing environment if, if we're very siloed and hierarchical. But at the same time, we have to make sure that we're hearing from a broad range of voices and a broad range of experiences around the table. So as we talk about the culture change we're trying to accomplish at the company, um, we're, we're talking about how do we foster that inclusive environment so that all, all voices are heard. Um, and, and, you know, it's not something that is, you know, you just say it and it happens. And some, some voices need to be encouraged to step up, particularly if it hasn't been a culture that has encouraged that in the past. So in order to get the most out of the team, we have to hear from the team. There has to be psychological safety and a welcoming environment for that, um, for that to happen. And, and we've been quite intentional as we've talked about um, how to change culture. It, it's not just lip service. It's, it's what are the interventions that we're doing, intentional interventions in meeting culture, and, and, and how do we ensure that we're hearing from, from the, you know, the broader associate population so that we can bring the best ideas forward. A consistent theme related to breaking down boundaries was finding ways to better integrate the organization around the customer experience. For our CEO panelists, the pandemic created an opportunity to encourage more agility in execution. Ying Shu of Umart and Gaston Botazzini of Falabella described how they enabled teams to work with more autonomy and facilitated faster decision-making. So we, we need to think uh, differently from just a single store, but an entire chain. And also not to think anymore online or offline to differentiate them. Uh, they are customers or consumption everywhere, anytime. Um, I guess that's um, something uh, really, you know, not just the e-commerce player or, you know, uh, internet player are thinking about. And so everybody in this market uh, need to think, think about this. So we prepare our uh, team. Um, they need to think just uh, um, you know, uh, without um, that too much boundaries, without um, uh, too much um, uh, limitations, not put the four walls around us, just to think, uh, you know, in a very extended way to serve customers, and, uh, you know, um, um, through uh, all types of uh, uh, formats and, or channels. What do we want to accomplish? We want to accomplish a better customer experience. Well, then we need to have teams that have risk embedded in them, that have the commercial team embedded in them, that have the technology team embedded in them, and that have the autonomy to make this experience better. And that's the other aspect of agility that we are pushing. And I think the pandemic has really helped us push because we were forced to make these changes very fast. Uh, and therefore, you start developing teams that are more horizontal, that are less divided into silos and that have common objectives and autonomy to make those objectives or those goals happen. Another source of organizational vitality has been innovation. The speed with which organizations have had to respond has unleashed creativity and truly demonstrated the value of tapping into employee insights much more broadly. We've heard clients share stories of innovation at every stage of the value chain, from supply chain to payment processing. Joanne Kravasarat, who related several examples of this from Tapestry, shares these organization-wide in her win of the week, stories that are used for recognition, learning, and best practice sharing. In this brief example, 
Joanne notes how store associates in China found new ways to connect with clients over social media during the pandemic. Our, our teams in the field who are great at clienteling and reaching consumers started to do this clienteling on, on social media channels. And they began to have outreach and, and sort of virtual shopping appointments with customers. And then they became um, sort of, uh, they did live stream shopping parties so that their consumers could have the experience of being in a store without actually being in a store through these digital channels. And interestingly, they became social media uh, influencers of their own rights. They began to get followers. Right. And so we, we said, wow, this is great. They're innovating on the ground, real time. Let's support that with the tools and training and technology they need to be successful. And then how do we take that learning and bring it across the world? And we brought it back to the US and, and we're doing it in, in multiple brands. So that's just a great example of how this innovation is happening fast and it's happening throughout our organization. The lessons of the past year have been profound. Working under conditions of great stress reveals vulnerabilities as well as previously underutilized organizational strengths. All of our CEO panelists noted that the humility inspired by the unanticipated crisis has heightened their awareness to what they do not know and reinforced their commitment to maintain their organization's agility. Ying Xu and Michael Klieger reinforced the need to apply their new leadership insights while remaining vigilant in the future. What should we do more uh, in the future? Um, I would say uh, we would be um, more inspired and so we would have less hesitation. We would tolerate the mistakes and, uh, for the purpose and to go faster um, to, you know, to innovate and to change. Uh, what would be the most important? Uh, well, I was thinking about this question. I would say uh, persistence would be something we believe extremely important for the transformation. So once we do, uh, we want to do something differently, especially facing a new situation, uh, new challenges. Uh, once we think this uh, opportunity, identify the opportunity and think through the physical business model. So what is left uh, will be persistence because all kinds of the innovation transformation will be very difficult. Uh, we'll be having, facing a lot of uh, resistance internally uh, from ourselves and from, from our own mindset. Um, so I would, uh, what I could conclude from this is um, digitalization and the change of mindset and also, um, you know, stay with uh, in the right direction once we decide. So that would be, you know, um, um, the key uh, drivers for the growth of a business and also for better customer satisfaction. Yeah, I think risk management is fantastic, but it tends to be about risks you are aware of. And the big problem about risk management is what you're not aware of. <laughs> and, and, and I think you need always to have that in your back of your mind. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest question about all of this is, okay, guys, what don't we know? What don't we know right now? And, and that's a learning and, and that's something you, you should always remind yourself. However smart you think you are. As we've reflected on the insights provided by our panelists, and as we've been informed by working with leadership teams across the globe, we would leave you with three critical messages. First, we've seen that the importance of having leadership fundamentals in place has only been amplified by the crisis. Those leaders who had committed time and energy to clarifying their organizational purpose, aligning teams to their strategy, building nimble organizational structures and processes, and fostering employee energy and vitality, we're able to respond with greater speed and consistency. As the retail industry transforms well beyond the pandemic, these will serve as the foundation for continued adaptation and execution. Second, as anticipated, COVID-19 has served as a great reset. The acceleration of digitalization, analytics, and technology enablement has surpassed everyone's expectations over the past year. Equally important, our CEO panelists highlighted that the very intentional steps they had taken to foster new mindsets, skill sets, and more inclusive cultures will underlie their infrastructure investments and truly be the spark for future innovation.
finally, the last year has accelerated the velocity of learning. The pandemic required leaders to upend their organizational assumptions and conventions. Our CEO panelists discussed changing communication mechanisms, breaking down organizational structures, and unleashing autonomous work teams. They recounted how the necessity of the pandemic response encouraged taking more calculated risks, becoming more accepting of errors, and expecting innovation much more broadly. They shared examples of decisions made with lightning speed based on imperfect information and delivering consumer solutions that in normal times may have taken years to develop instead of weeks or days. It's no surprise that none of the leaders we spoke with talked of turning the clock back to the old way of doing things. Ultimately, the greatest lesson from the past year may be the insights and confidence with which to embrace the industry's accelerated transformation. On behalf of the Spencer Stewart team, we'd like to express our sincere thanks to the World Retail Congress for inviting us to participate, to our distinguished CEO panelists for sharing their insights, and most of all, to everyone on this call for spending time with us today. We wish everyone continued success and good health. Thank you very much.